Hi, I'm Tara Platt, the voices of Mitsuru and Edelgard, and I am chatting with Anime Impulse. It was amazing. First of all, we were so flattered to be asked, both my husband Yuri Lowenthal and I. We were part of their When Bubbles Burst topic. We decided that we wanted to talk about storytelling because we believe that we're storytellers. Um, because besides being actors, we're writers, we're producers, basically we view life as a story. So you as an individual get the chance and the opportunity to make your life your story. It was a huge honor to get asked and it was very exciting to be a part of it. Well, for me, I know this always sounds bland to people, but I'm a vanilla vanilla girl. And so if you can have like a perfectly lightly sweet vanilla cake with like a creamy buttercream vanilla icing, it's like heaven for me. I don't want it to be fancy. I actually want it to be very, very simple. I do not. Yuri does all the cooking and baking. Yuri actually almost became a chef when he was younger. He is an extraordinary cook and baker. But I'm a good sous chef. I will chop up all the vegetables and I will get all the ingredients sorted and measured and stuff. It is so much fun. We've been married almost 18 years now. It's almost like, you know when you're dating somebody and you're just so excited to see them? Whenever I get to work with him, I just get like sort of bubbly and silly and giggly like a little girl, which is fun because, you know, after having been married, almost two decades. It's nice to just really like the person that I'm married to. I think he's so talented and he's such a good person that it's fun to be around him and he's great in the booth and it's a thrill to get the opportunity to work next to him. If you have seen the episode of Hawaii Five-O that we were on, it's a total makeout session, which was fun. Because I think one of the reasons that the casting director cast us is they knew we were married, so they're like, they'll be okay kissing and making out because they already like each other, and so it won't be an issue. We didn't realize quite how risque it was gonna be. Like, we were not wearing anything. I mean, they had, in, in television and things like that, when you're doing some sort of like sexual simulated scene or whatever, they do have little things that you wear, but they're basically like stick on stickers. So you're like patching stickers to yourself and it's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> yes, we're married, but it's also like you're on a set with a cameraman and lights and all these people and you're trying to look like you're being sexy, but it's totally not a sexy environment. So it was a little awkward, but it was also so much fun. And I mean, what a thrill to fly to Hawaii for a week to get to shoot an episode of television with your husband. Well, I mean, I've been married almost 18 years, so I think I'm probably more in the camp of thinking marriage is okay and good. Uh, whereas Washimi is totally like, uh-uh, we're done with this. Hey, my turn. You cry at the drop of a hat. Your emotional IQ is not all that. You're pinning all your hopes onto a fairy tale when it's clear to everybody that you're doomed to fail. Well, Fire Emblem Three Houses has a very complicated through line because you have three distinct characters with three distinct points of view that believe that what they are doing is the only solution and the only way to make the world right and get not only what they want, but help other people. And I think that that's such a challenging and exciting concept. People think that the choices they're making are good choices. That's why we make our choices. All of us go through our lives trying to do the best we can. Now, sometimes we don't have all the information and sometimes what we believe is good is actually gonna be bad for a lot of people. But when we make those choices, we're doing the best we can to stay afloat and to help ourselves and to help the people that we're trying to be around. Now, knowing that and knowing that for a character, you can sort of step above that a little bit and look at the character and go, oh, what you're doing is not great because you can see it with perspective, whereas when you're in it, you can't. It's almost like watching a horror movie. You're like, don't go down that hallway. Don't, because you know that the guy with the knife is standing at the end of the hallway and you know that because you have the perspective. But for the person going down that hallway, they don't know. They think that they're escaping. They think that they're getting away. They think that they're gonna visit their brother. Whatever they think they're doing, they think they're making a good choice. And so I love that about Adel because I believe she really thinks that the only way she can get through and make the world work and fix it for everybody is by doing what she believes she needs to do. And I think that's very powerful and empowering and it's a great choice to be able to play. Like conviction is great, you know, it's, it's fun to play conviction. I think her desire to do right. I mean, I'm always trying to do the right thing. When I go through my life, I'm, I'm always trying to make right choices. Now they don't always end up being right, and sometimes you hurt people's feelings, like you try to tell the truth and that hurts somebody's feelings. Now, is it better to have lied and not hurt their feelings? No, I don't think. I think telling the truth is always the best course of action, but it doesn't mean that people don't get hurt. 
And so I can really understand her desire to do what she believes is right. You have to do what you believe is right and that's what all people are doing. It's why people vote politically the way they vote because they believe they're doing the right thing. It's why people believe morally the things that they believe morally. It's why people have the values they have. We all believe we're doing the right thing and then we look at other people and we're like, what are they doing? That's totally wrong. And yet, if you're on the other side of that mirror looking the other direction, you believe that about them. And so I can completely relate to that feeling of like, I'm just trying to do the right thing and it's not easy. Kill every last one of them. My moment has arrived. I will say the honor of getting to play a character like Tamari for 15 years, I mean, that's practically unheard of. But to get to play a role for 15 years is amazing because you're maturing and you're becoming more of who you are while the character is also going through the same experience in their own realm, in their own world, with their own sense of humanity. So obviously you are not your character, but you keep bringing new things to your character because you are a new person. Every day you're a new person and the choices you've made yesterday make you who you are today, which continue you forward till tomorrow. But that's also happening for your character and it's really exciting as an actor to get to revisit that. For Persona, I had a really great time because I get to bring Elizabeth and Mitsuru to life and they're such totally distinctively different characters. And I always love it when people don't know that I've played one of the other, like they'll know that I did Elizabeth or they'll know that I did Mitsuru, but they won't know that I did both. And when they find out that I did both, that's always a thrill for me because they're very distinctly different characters. And often I get cast as a certain type of character. So it's always fun to get to play a character like Elizabeth. That's just so wackadoo. Well, I think the fun for me with that is I was cast as Mitsuru first. And so I really got Mitsuru down and I, I kind of knew where she was vocally. I knew where she was coming from. I really understood her as a character. And then they came to me with Elizabeth and I was like, oh, this is gonna be fun because I can make her so wildly different. So I got to really push the voice because she naturally is such a different type of character. I got to really sort of see what the diametric opposites were and then play that against each other so that that way when I'm playing one character, it's just completely different from playing the other character. And as an actor, I mean, that's really fun. It's, it's one of the reasons actors often are like, I love to play the villain because the villains are so much fun. The heroes are always trying to make good choices, whereas the villains are like, I don't care. And they're just wilder and bigger and crazier oftentimes, even though in a villain story, they believe they're the hero. So you always have to sort of keep everything in balance. So you think I should just go with the flow? Perhaps that's all I can do. I'm so sorry, Yuri. I should have been here. He knew exactly what he was doing. He went straight for the case as marked Project Olympus. Any idea what that is? No, but he has it now. And we'll get him. I know. Where are you going? To teach a lesson in fear. Whoa, 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 whoa. I think I probably followed you the good cop, but if I'm in a mood, sometimes Yuri definitely has to be the good cop and I will be the bad cop. But usually, like if we go to a store, for example, if I buy something and then I need to return it because it didn't fit or I didn't like it, like I'll go into the store and I'm like, I'm so sorry, I need to return this. There's nothing wrong with it. It's still lovely. I just, it wasn't right for me. And Yuri's like, just, just return it. Like you don't have to go through the whole thing. And so he'll come in and he's just like, we need to return this. And he gets very serious about it. But most of the time I'm good cop, I think. I think I'm definitely good cop. Yeah. Oftentimes there are characters or roles or stories inside of us that we still want to express even if we're not playing them for someone else. And we had enough ideas for feature films and web series and shorts that we just started to wanna to make them. It's probably been about 15 years ago that we found it. I should probably look up the exact date. We did it a long time ago, but we've done several features. We actually are in pre-production on several more features right now. We have web series like Shelf Life, which is super fun. And we did a web series called What a Lark about a woman trying to decide if she wants to be a mom. We also created a publishing company because we've published a number of books. We did a book on voiceover, voiceover voice actor, and I wrote a kid's book uh, using my hypnotherapy experience because I'm a certified hypnotherapist. I I wrote a rhyming book for kids to help them go to sleep called Relax Your Toes. We're always creating. Like I, like I said, we're storytellers and we have ideas that we want to express and that we want to share and that we're passionate about. I believe firmly that if someone else isn't helping you, you do it yourself. So we created our publishing company and our production company and we just keep generating and we keep creating and we keep doing things that inspire us. We sort of let the world decide if they like it or not, but we keep doing it for ourselves. What does voice acting mean to me? I'm an actor and when I act, I play characters and I do that on stage, I do that on screen and I sometimes do it behind a microphone using what I like to believe are my gifts, which is storytelling. 
and bringing characters to life in vividly aesthetic ways. Often for me, I find that when I'm most happy, I am getting to play a character on camera or on stage. Um, because I get all of the physical aesthetics that go along with it, the hair, the makeup, the costumes, the set, the, the visuals of that. But if I don't get that experience and I get to get, bring a character to life behind a microphone, as long as I can bring my authenticity, my humanity, my, my creative choices as an actor to that work, then I feel that I've done my job in storytelling. And as long as I've told the story in the way that the producers and the directors and my own work ethic feel proud about, then I'm very happy with the work that I've done. Hey, thanks so much for watching my interview. I am Tara Platt and I'm at Tara Platt on Instagram and Twitter. If you are interested, you can check out our production company, which is monkeykingdomproductions.com or our publishing company, which is bugbotpress.com. So please uh, hit me up there and let me know what your favorite cupcake is. <laughs>